Hey everybody, I'm Zelda Master and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So, here we are in Terrytown. And well, as you can tell, yeah, it's not really much of a town. At least, not yet. But in this video, we're gonna be focusing on building this town from the ground up. I mean, Link is not gonna be doing it per se, but we're gonna help. And that's pretty much the side quest we are gonna be doing, which is from the ground up. And to pretty much start this side quest, or have it available for you, you have to first start the Hylian Ownership side quest and purchase the house over in Haytino. And once you do that, Bolson, the owner of the construction crew, will actually send Hudson here to the Akala region, and that's where he'll get started on Terry Town. So, yeah, it's time to get started, and overall the side quest is really awesome because it's going to bring together all of the, you know, people in the races of Hyrule, and, uh, you know, we're going to make a pretty much a town, which I think is really cool how you have to pretty much do that. And, yeah, you guys are going to see essentially how this goes. So let's start off by talking to Hudson and get started. So, hey, we meet again. So who are you? I guess Link already forgot, but I'm one of Bolson's construction contractors. The name's Hudson. Okay, I remember. Uh, me too. <laughs> what do you remember? I, I don't really know. Also, I have to point out his head, yeah, it kind of reminds me of like Toad. I mean, he also has like a little logo of, I'm assuming, his head or a Toad house on his back. I don't know. Yeah, for some reason, I can't help but think of like a Toad reference or whatever. But so, what are you doing? So, since I've been transferred here, I've decided to build a village from scratch. Every village needs a name, though. I think I'll call it Terrytown. Okay, that's a good idea. However, what's wrong? I built a house to store the village supplies in, but there just isn't enough. Enough what? Enough anything. People? Money? Stuff? Okay, so yeah, this is where we come in, so I'll help out. But why? There's nothing in it for you. Uh, okay, well, I don't mind. Doesn't matter. You're a lifesaver. Well, I suppose to get started, we'll need houses for people to live in. We can't invite them until we have homes. Do you think you could bring me ten bundles of wood? Yeah, I got that. I mean, yes, we're going to be collecting a lot of wood in the side quest, so be prepared. But don't worry, I'll show a really easy way to farm them soon. But yeah, if you bring me that, I could combine it with what I already got and get started on new houses. So yeah, alright, so let's get started with the side quest. And the first thing we need to do is deliver him wood. Now off screen, I decided just to make the start of this side quest a little easier. I went ahead and got myself 60 bundles of wood. So yeah, this is pretty much a good start. Though we're gonna need more than this, so be prepared. But hello, so yeah, did you bring me the 10 bundles? I brought them, so excellent. Can I have them? Sure, so you're a lifesaver. We'll be saying that quite a bit, but all right. So, well, next is these boulders are driving me nuts. I want to move them out of the way so we could develop the land underneath. Uh, it'd be really nice if you can help find someone uh, with enough brute physical strength to burst them apart. Okay, so physical strength, huh? Yeah, if we're talking about brute physical strength, and we are, a Goron would be my first choice. Good luck, you'll need it. Yeah, because this is a long shot. He's telling us to go get a Goron to work for him. Uh, okay. Oh, and one last wrinkle. Uh, what? Yeah, in accordance with the official Bolson construction policy that someone's name must end in Sun. Yes, if you couldn't tell it with Hudson, Bolson, and uh, Carson, they all have Sun in their name. And yeah, if you run into anyone that fits what I've said, send them here to Terrytown for me. So this is pretty much how the side quest is going to work. We're going to have to find people with Sun at the end of their name so that way they can fit in this whole town and you know be a part of the construction crew because yeah that's pretty much a part of the guidelines apparently which I find freaking hilarious so the adventure begins looking for the yeah for the Goron with the name Sun <laughs> at the end of his name at least so we're gonna be doing that but before I do that because I'm sure you're wondering I mean why not head over to uh, Goron City or somewhere near Death Mountain so that way we can start making uh, our way and, and, and try to find a Goron because we're clearly not going to find one here in Akala. Well, I am going to do that, but as you can see on the map, Akala isn't really by any shrines. And if we're going to be coming back to Hudson constantly wanting to, um, you know, 
update him on what we're doing, give him bundles of wood, all of that jazz, well, we're going to need a shrine that is nearby. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and locate a shrine nearby, and I'm pretty much going to show you guys the shrine that we're going to be using throughout the game to head over to Terrytown. If you played the game before and did this quest, I'm sure this is the shrine that you might have also been using as well, because this is the easiest one to head to Terrytown from. Now, it's not as close as it may seem, but we can actually see it right up there. I wish I could use my scope when on the horse, but I can't. But anyways, alright, let's go ahead and start making our way up. And yeah, um, if you couldn't tell, I also brought Epona with me, uh, you know, off screen when I was farming for wood and coming back to Terrytown, because... Um, yeah, I mean, a opponent would be pretty useful, and I didn't do that in the last video, but aha, yes, the shrine is right there. It feels weird to see shrines just out in the blue, and uh-oh. Okay, so, I don't know how this works. I don't think I've ever been in this situation for some reason, but let's see what happens when I get struck by lightning on Epona. I really hope that doesn't damage Epona. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, that was so stupid. How did I not realize that? I thought it would have deflected it, but all right, sorry, Epona. Let us, you know, I'm just going to leave Epona. Uh, yeah, we're probably going to attract more lightning, so I'm not going to risk it. I don't know why I like... Yeah, just let that happen. But at least since we have the Thunder Helm, we don't have to worry about anything affecting us. But, alright, let's go ahead and just quickly make our way there. And since it is raining, the um, the ground is much more slippery. And it, it's really cool because it actually does aff affect the shield surfing. You can, um, yeah, slide much easier with a shield if you have it. So let's go ahead and try this again. And, uh, you know, yeah, we're making some movement. You know, it's pretty nice. And did I hear, like, some music? Like, the music in this game is so subtle, and I love it, but I feel like the, it's playing it. Yeah, the really subtle music that would play in the trailers. I feel like this is not the time with the rain and, and the lightning and everything, but all right. Let's go ahead and... Oh, jeez. All right. Let's go ahead and now activate the shrine. Yeah, this is the shrine I was speaking of. Now, if we leave this area, we can easily teleport back and find a very easy way to head back to Terrytown because... Yeah, this is just pretty much going to make it so much easier for us. And actually, this is going to give us a fourth spirit uh, orb. So that way, we can actually get ourselves another heart container as well. So that's not bad. But let's go ahead and get started. And this is a minor test of strength. No wonder it was, like, literally right in front of us. It wasn't too hard to, uh, you know, avoid. I purposely must have went in a different route to not see the shrine whatsoever because yeah this is a pretty basic and easy shrine I mean it's a minor test so I believe two or three hits will kill this guardian I mean let's let's see with this royal clan. oh no no he actually has 300 huh well whatever it's still gonna take a couple seconds one two three uh, okay let's uh bye <laughs> okay so yeah it feels a little weird taking on a minor test this late within the game but I guess it's nice to see our progression because, I mean, didn't we take on a minor test of strength over in Kakariko way back? It was one of the very first shrines we took on, and I remember that actually taking me a while to, to get past, but, yeah, no, I don't think that's going to be of use. I mean, it was a minor test uh, guardian, so I doubt he would have dropped anything too good, but let's see what's inside this chest, and well, um, actually, that's really useful. You know, we can, we can use these giant cores, not just to uh, get stuff over in the Akala Tech Lab, but also to upgrade weapons. That's going to be really useful. And I will get to upgrading weapons because a lot of weapons, if you get them two stars, the whole set that is, you have to actually get the whole set two stars. And if you wear the set, you can get set bonuses on certain, uh, you know, attire that you can wear, like, certain sets within the game, and some of them prove to be really useful, so if you do get a set that may not have a set bonus, don't worry, upgrading it might eventually get you the set bonus with the Great Fairies, and that's why I feel like it's a must in terms of, like, really 100%ing the game. I gotta upgrade everything, so I will get to that, but when the time comes, I mean, we don't really have to worry too much. Uh, my main goal is just to kind of max out the Hylian stuff so that way I have more defense, but then we'll see afterwards. But alright, so this is a good example. Let me just put on the Thunder Helm while I'm still here. This is a good example of where we're going to need to, uh, yeah, drop an apple, pay respects to, you know, okay, whoops, the goddess Hylia, I guess, by, uh, you know, dropping an apple, kind of like what the Sheikah do. If it falls in, there we go, but in reality, we're getting ourselves a Korok Seed. 
Yeah, all right. Let me go ahead and try to quickly pick up the apples before they fry. Oh, okay, well, that happened. One just flew completely. I didn't even... Unless I picked it up before the lightning struck. I don't know. But whatever. All right. So, now, with that done, it is time to leave. As you can see, we have easy access to Terrytown. We just glide over Lake Akala, and we'll be there in a second. Uh, I'll go ahead and show off. Yeah, so there's Terrytown. Won't take too much stamina to glide from one area to another. Now, we'll show it off, like, a lot within this video, because we're going to constantly be coming back to Terrytown. I just thought I'd show you guys the easiest way, just in case, uh, yeah, you don't know where the shrine is in that area because uh, unlike stables which usually have a shrine right by it this one doesn't it's it's a little further away not so hidden because yeah we spotted it from far away but uh, it's not as close as you may think it would be with it being a town and how all other towns have like shrines literally within the town itself instead of it being outside the town same goes for stables or I believe there's like one or two stables within the game that don't have shrines right by them just because they have like cities by them or something beyond those lines which I'll show off as well maybe in this video regardless we got to look for the Goron now so all right let's go ahead and uh, first equipped proper armor which I guess I'll uh, put on let's see where is uh, the fireproof stuff I don't know why I'm like passing by there we go or I'll put on the pants <laughs> that will work and I don't need the thunder helm anymore we could take that off but all right um, yeah I just prefer having the champion tunic like mentioned it's a uh, it's kind of like the, you know I feel like the game wants you to do that you know just kind of have it on with anything because you're always gonna get whatever effect with you know tops two items you'll never need to use all three unless you're going for the set bonus which I mentioned earlier so I guess you don't really need the champion tunic at all times or yeah but for me I like it because it gives you a lot of defense for what it is plus it looks really cool you know like I said with Link being pr promoted you know through the games are and all of that with this tunic I feel like it's the the right tunic to wear at all times but I'm sure my opinion differs uh, with many because yeah, I'm not sure if a lot of you guys agree with that with you know wearing the champion tunic all, at all times I mean, it's cool that we can customize link and I really do enjoy that But I feel like for recording because yeah in my own personal files. I, whoa How rude was that in my own personal files? I usually try out. Okay. I think it's dead anyways We don't even have to <laughs> worry about that. It like ran off. It's you know screw it I'm probably gonna get killed for attacking this guy. So yeah better peace but, um, yeah, as you can see, I did pass Goron City, and you may be wondering why, because, you know, I said I was going to go to Goron City to find a Goron. Well, this person, if you did speak to everyone in Goron City, you're not going to find the guy you're looking for. The person we're actually looking for is located in the Southern Mines, I believe, uh, which is, like, pretty much the mines that you first encounter when approaching Death Mountain. And, again, I'll uh, open up the map. I mean, you can actually see, yeah, it's literally called the Southern Mines. So... Yes, this is where we're heading to, and hey, look, some untouched ore. You know what? Let me first mess with this. And wait, can you actually hear the Gorons humming? That's pretty hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, so in the Southern Mines, you know, I believe there's actually a side quest to get a fireproof set of armor. I didn't really care too much about it because I was more in a time crunch when I needed it. But I believe, yeah, this is the guy who will be willing to give it to you. I don't really need to worry about him right now because, um... I already have his fireproof armor that he would give me. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and now speak to the Goron that we are looking for. And, well, yeah, it's going to be one of these construction workers. Now, I believe, is it him? Yes, okay, I managed to actually speak to him immediately. If you speak to any character, usually their name appears above their head before you speak to them. But if you never speak to them, then you have to first talk to them to get that to happen. So, yeah, I never spoke to this guy yet, but now I have... And now we know what his name is. So what's your name? Link has to ask just in case. The name's Grayson, so what's it to you? The name ends with sun. I like that. What about it? It's time to work. If you want to talk, come back at night when I'm relaxing. Uh, well, you know what? Screw you. I want to talk now. <laughs> Look, they're all freaking terrified. Yeah, the faces they make are hilarious. Even him. I wasn't even near you. But, yeah, let's go ahead and speak to, you know what? Take care, dude. Uh, let's go ahead and speak to all of them so I can show you guys just an idea of how, like, yeah, the text. See, now if I come near him, it will immediately display his name, which I guess gives you an incentive to speak to every character because, as you can see, no name. Uh, but as you can see, Pelosin as well. There's sun in this, 
And look at little kitties running. The Gorons are so freaking cute. But, all right, let's go ahead and now um, rest until nighttime. Because as we know, Grayson, he's busy. He's working. He, yeah, he can't really speak during work hours. He's a, he's a hardworking guy. You know, he doesn't take work, you know, as as a joke or anything like yeah everyone else I mean, i'm kidding i don't really know where i'm going with that but yeah i'm assuming you know these gorons all work pretty hard when you think about it. i mean this guy's working overtime then again i believe this is the guy who sleeps during the day so he has to make up for the night so at this hour yo okay what the heck i'm a traveler okay give it to you stray i don't even know i'm speaking this guy so like i said i'm a traveler fine keep your circuits you know what yeah i'm done talking to this guy like i said i want to speak to Grayson so let's go ahead and do that so come on I'm on a break what is it so uh and you are Grayson uh I don't like repeating myself though so just remember that okay I'm a digger here as you can see I dig and I dig day in and day out to be honest I'm sick of it I feel like maybe I'm not meant to toil away in absurdity like this <sighs> Is there a job out there for me that let me use my strength to make a difference? Actually, there is. Huh? There is? Where? Please tell me more. Well, Terrytown. Yes, Terrytown. Never heard of it. Uh, so what kind of uh, deal with that place? So, hmm. Yeah, Link is explaining. So, Nakala, Terrytown. So, there is somewhere out there who needs me. Hmm, Makala isn't far from here. All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna strike while the iron is hot. Well, he's up. He seems excited about this, so thanks for letting me know, brother. Pallison and I are gonna head there right away. While I'm at it. And yeah, okay, we, are, we already spoke to him too, so Pallison, we're gonna leave. And well, it is time. So, hmm? All right, yes, aside from the way the Goron was running, the little Goron, Pelosin, that was adorable. But, uh, yeah, the music that played, I mean, if you couldn't tell, again, it is kind of referring to Terrytown. When we first saw Hudson leave us in the last video when doing the Hylian ownership side quest, and then, yeah, we hear it in Terrytown's theme, and it's really cool because, I don't know, for me, I really like the way it shows these uh these different characters slowly coming to the town and it being built together and like even grayson said he wants to make a difference and this is where he'll make a difference and we're going to see it firsthand i mean we're going to be able to see Terrytown be built so yeah now let's go ahead and make our way back to the town itself by teleporting here and we're going to have to pretty much glide every time but it's uh it's not that bad i mean i kind of enjoy it the only issue about Heading here constantly is the fact that you have to avoid the lightning when you're trying to head to the town itself. Usually in towns, you don't have to worry too much about, you know, any natural disaster. But I guess since this is out in Akala, it's a little bit different. Akala overall is one of the coolest areas within uh, my opinion in terms of the region because it's it just feels like it's very late game, if anything, even though the game is so open world. Anything can be light game, but compared to like just other regions and it having obviously the Akala Tech Lab being way superior to, uh, you know, per us just because we can actually buy tech gear. But I guess it's because they're different tech labs, different research, whatever. My point is, uh, I just really like Akala. But anyways, hey, so you sent some Gorons back here. That's perfect. The brute strength of the Goron is undeniable. Those boulders don't stand a chance against them. And with people like Grayson and Pellison, they fit in right. Okay, so also Pellison started selling ore found within those boulders. You should go and say hello again. Well, next is, uh, okay, so what do you want? So before uh, people can move here, we need, yeah, more homes for them to live in that means more wood so 20 bundles of wood and luckily like i said i farmed off screen so we got the wood let's go ahead and give it to him succulent can i have him sure you're a lifesaver all right go ahead and take him so what is the next thing to do to help out this town well working so Chlar is okay it, I guess he needs tailoring for him. Uh, yeah, so someone who's got a gift for tailoring for me. All right. So if we talk about tailoring, there could be someone among the Gerudo. So apparently the Gerudo are special in that, and that's what he wants. One last wrinkle, though. What is it? Oh, yeah, in accordance with the official, yeah, Bolson construction policy. We have to find someone that, yeah, ends in sun. So 
Doesn't matter who it is, as long as it's a tailor with son in, at the end of their name, we're good. Now, before I do head there, I just kind of want to show off the progression of how this town is going. So, as we can see, yeah, you know, little Pallison is uh, selling... Um, Selling some ore and it's really expensive though. So screw that. I do not want to buy it. <laughs> and then we have uh, Grayson at work. But obviously he is way more happy because he's actually making a difference. As you can see, look at that smile on his face. He's actually hard at work and he's enjoying it for once. Not bad. Okay, so that's good and all. And we can see yeah, another house is built pretty much for uh, Grayson and his son. And actually I want to go ahead and look at it real quickly. It's pretty snazzy, you know, I don't know how a Goron could fit on a bed like that, but yeah, uh, and oh yeah, by the way, the music, which I have to let you guys uh, pay attention to as well. Okay, so right now it's just playing the normal theme, which kind of reminds me of Animal Crossing, but it added an extra, like, uh, theme to it with, like, different instruments right now. Yeah, it's it's kind of like also referring to, you know, how the Gorons joined the town. So it has this like Goron city type uh, theme to it. I don't know. I just really like the way you can really tell the town comes together and everything. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't stress enough how much I like the whole idea of this side quest. But anyways, now let's go ahead and uh, teleport and make our way to Gerudo because... Yeah, we got to find a Gerudo that is specialized in tailoring and that could somehow help Hudson in his tailoring needs because apparently that's really important in terms of building a town. So let's go ahead and get into that and pretty much, yeah, like he said, it was a Gerudo. So we're going to head over, but not to Gerudo Town per se. We're actually going to make our way to Kara Kara Bazaar. Now it's funny enough because we did speak to this person before. It is a Gerudo. And like many of the Gerudo, she is looking for a Vo, you know, someone out there that, you know, she can, I guess, literally what all Gerudos look for. They are looking for that Vo that they can end up with, essentially, you know, their partner and all of that. Well, uh, yeah, she was one of the people looking for uh, one of them, and uh, she didn't mention her tailoring, so we already know there is someone out there, and uh, yeah, she exists in uh, Kara Kara Bazaar. That's where she resides, so we're going to be heading literally there. It's, it doesn't really take too much to, like, kind of uh, figure out where they are. Like, the first time I remember doing this quest and, yeah, having to look for all of the, um, the different people that Hudson wants, uh, like, in general, you just kind of trying to figure out who is who and what like if you just head to the two areas you'll find the race and i mean yeah you're probably gonna find it like if it's not guru town then kara kara bazaar as well will find guru as well same goes for like goron city if it wasn't goron city then it was probably the mines or something else where we find a lot of gorons residing in and yeah kara kara bazaar is an area where a lot of guru reside in uh as well as non gerudo because you know most people can't really get their way in to Gerudo Town since you have to be a Vey, but my point is uh, over here anyone can uh, can roam around. And actually we're looking for a Gerudo, so it doesn't even matter. And here she is. Now, if you couldn't tell by her name, yeah, Ronson, you know, literally we spoke to her before. So we know her story and everything. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and sit and tell... I guess noon, because I don't know when Ronson wakes up, and I feel like morning is a little too early. People might still be asleep, so I guess just, yeah, the best way to forward time here is to sit down until, um, yeah, the afternoon, and now let's go ahead and speak to her. So I wonder if she's going to say the same story. Oh, no, she isn't. So, yeah, I'm still considering how to continue my search. I've mastered tailoring. I have dozens of other skills. I just don't understand what Vo are looking for. So, okay, well, there's actually a Vo literally looking for you. So go to Terrytown. Trust me. So what is it? So abrupt, too. Let me hear the details. There's a guy looking for tailoring who wants the last name Sun in it. Hudson in Terrytown needs a tailor. It's something, I suppose. The Akala region is kind of far away. But maybe I need to travel, getting far away from the village, full of vey. 
but it's not like I'm accomplishing anything uh, by staying here. I can continue my search in Terrytown. So she seems to have convinced herself. So yeah, thanks for the information. I'm gonna go pack a huge bag. It's gonna be a long journey. It's yeah, I find it funny how all of these people have to worry about the journey. When I got the Sheikah Slate, I could do fast travel. Heck yeah. <laughs> But, alright, so, uh, goodbye, and again... Yeah, the music plays, letting you know that we have gotten yeah, another person to join Terrytown, the quest from the ground up. Now, huh, before I leave, and I kind of mainly only want to focus on this quest in this video, but... But, it's been a blood moon, so let's see, yes, okay, so... Luckily for us, and I mean this is pretty easy to find, if in Karakara Bazaar, you can actually find a Gerudo Scimitar pretty easily. Now, let's see if I have the- okay, well let's see if I have the necessary supplies. Either way, I need this, so goodbye Boku Spear, we got the Scimitar. Now, I also need myself a diamond, which I'm just gonna go ahead and- and we got the diamond and I need five flint. Okay, we have exactly what we need. Sweet! So, you know how I lost your Bosa sword? Well, not anymore. We're gonna get ourselves a replica right now because, uh, yeah, I can actually get one from, uh, uh, Beleria over in Gerudo Town, but I'm kind of curious. So, hello there. Uh, have we met before Rito Village? I've been there. I know all about it, so you don't need to tell me. But this guy, I'm just kind of curious to see what quest this is. I heard an elixir that can beat the heat. Oh, okay. So, I guess we'll do that. This is a nice guy. He's a nice guy for telling us, and a nice guy, because he, he's going to show us the way of the ice. But, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and quickly do this quest here. So, he was telling us about mixing a cold-style bug with cold animals, uh, and I don't even think I have any bugs to be doing that. So, yeah. All right, whatever. We can easily use this. And then if I have any ice parts, which I do, white choo-choo jelly. So we're going to use this little critter with um, some monster parts and well. I want to see how excited Link gets over like an elixir. I mean, he, he's genuinely happy as you can see. Look, he got a big smile on his face. Be Oh, a hasty because I asked. Okay, so don't mix two different things together. Um, that was really dumb on my part. Is Beetle here? I'm going to, I bet I can solve this side quest if Beetle is here. I don't see him anymore. Um, but yeah, that was pretty dumb on my part. I mixed the wrong two things. You don't want to do that. Okay, Beetle is here. So, pretty much all I needed to do was find, like, a butterfly or something. And there are butterflies with that effect, that if you mix with monster parts, it will also work. So, let's see what you get. Okay, literally exactly what I was talking about. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and buy this little... Uh, dragonfly that's gonna give us cool resistance when mixed with monster parts. So let us make a monster elixir with literally that and just kind of um, <laughs> finish that side quest. And it's hilarious when you see the uh, Gerudo like just yell randomly. But uh, all right, so where is that? Let me actually organize it. So let's do this right. <laughs> uh, okay, ice hold. We're gonna hold like two of these and then we're gonna go ahead and hold ourselves the the critter which is this perfect now let's cook it and I'll just skip this because I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be anything too special chili elixir this could help us but we have um, you know items and stuff for it so we don't even have to worry about that all right let's go in and speak to guy his name is literally guy here's the elixir guy oh. have fun guy all right so yeah now he's happy and he gave us rupees I mean, none of the, you know, the, the stuff you get from the side quest are ever really worth it. Except, like, the one we're doing now. I mean, don't get me wrong. Terrytown, super worth it. But my point is... And what am I saying? Hudson even says it himself. There's nothing in it for you. Even though, I, because I'd say Terrytown, you don't really get too much out of it. But it's the it's seeing the progression to me that makes it worth it. But in other side quests, when you just give a, a character something they want... If you don't look at the rupees as really much of a reward, then you really get nothing else out of it. But for me, I got to do every side quest. And plus, I enjoy it. Like, regardless, it's still fun. A lot of them are very tutorial based. Like, let's be honest, that ice guy tutorial. I mean, it was a tutorial, essentially. 
uh, just masked in a side quest, you know, the game introducing to you how to make elixirs with bug parts and monster parts and stuff like that. Uh, and then you get reward out of it, of course. You know, I, I guess that's how, like, most side quests are, but I feel like it's too early game, you know? So, since I skipped the majority of them, since I knew what to do, I just look at them as, yeah, just kind of like a waste of time. But since I am going to do them all, it doesn't matter. We got to still consider... Whoa! Okay. <laughs> I did not want to, like, yeah, break this uh, scimitar because I forgot to actually upgrade it, which uh, we're going to go ahead and do. But let's go ahead and speak to Hudson because I want to finish this first. So, hey, so you found someone from Gerudo. Thank you. She was able to patch every last hole uh, in my work clothes before I could blink. She's pretty uh, amazing. <laughs> okay, so and her, uh, since her name is Ronson, I have no objections. I hear she's decided to continue putting her skills to use by opening a clothes shop. Uh, you should stop by and say hello. Well, next is, all right, so what do we have to do next? So before more people uh, can move here, we need more wood, yeah. So this time, 30 bundles. Luckily, that's exactly how much I have left. Ooh. Thing is, that's not as much wood as we need. We're gonna need even more, but let's give them the 30 that we have. So sure, go ahead, take them. Now I'm actually gonna have to farm for some, but all right, what's next? Um, Okay, so it's finally starting to look like a town around here, uh, which is exactly why we need to step up some distribution. I'd like to get a general store up and running, and there's no one with connections and qualifications to run it. Do you think you can keep an eye out to find someone who knows about distribution and can run a general store? Okay, so a traveling trader essentially is what he means. And oh, that's a good thought. Rito can fly around, so they should be able to retrieve and deliver supplies. Good luck, you'll need it. Again, because yeah, it is a long shot getting someone and convincing them to come to this town. Luckily, it's been easy because they've been convincing themselves. Uh, so, oh, one last wrinkle, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we got to find it with sun so it can meet the requirements. So, you know the drill, guys. Uh, we're going to be doing just that. But I do have enough spirit orbs to upgrade my heart or to get myself another heart container. But that can wait. But, all right. So, as you can see, yes, uh, Ronson is here. And she is selling the Gerudo uh, Vo attire. We can already buy the Gerudo Vo attire in, um, in Gerudo Town itself if you enter the secret shop. So, yeah, I mean, it's cool that she's selling it as well. But... It doesn't really matter, you know? <laughs> All right, so now it is time to head over and get that Rito. But before I make my way back, I am going to have to really consider yeah, finding some wooden planks. Because don't worry, the next time he asks uh, for, for wood from you, it will be the last time. But think about it, it went from 10 to 20 to 30. It's not going to be 40, though. It's going to be 50. So we need 50 bundles of wood for the last time. So, yeah, you go through quite a bit. I mean, over 100. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it, I mean, it doesn't really take that long because I'm literally going to show you guys how you can farm it very easily and a very easy way to farm it without breaking any of your weapons if you don't have a woodcutter's axe. So, yeah, it, it's not really that difficult. And I just realized I teleported to the wrong area. Could have maybe teleported to the shrine. Uh, whatever. Here, here's, you know, the Divine Beast Meadow. As you can see, it is preparing to shoot a blast over in Hyrule Castle, and we cannot come near it. But, I, I mean, I guess it's nice to teleport to it and check it out. Regardless, let's go ahead and jump down over to Rito Village. The, uh, yeah, I'd still say even after, um... Even after we complete Terrytown, this is still my favorite village, just because it's music and uh, the setting. Like, we're on, like, a canyon high up in the sky, and I don't know, just the way everything looks is really cool. But then Terrytown is definitely second favorite. It's I don't know, I like all the towns. I mean, Kakariko is amazing, too. Lurlin, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're all awesome. Sora's Domain, even. Like, I, I can't deny it. My point is, uh, this is a cool town. <laughs> All right, so let's speak over to this guy here. I mean, he's kind of chilling, and, uh, yeah, he seems kind of upset. I mean, if we speak to him, he'll say, hey, what's up? And if you couldn't tell, yes, Fison, it definitely has what we're looking for. So I'm glad Metal has settled down, but I have bigger problems. My mom said she wanted 
uh, to take over the family store someday. Can you believe that? I don't want to just help. I want to own my store and sell whatever I want. As you can see, it's perfectly fitting to what we're looking for. So, heard of Terrytown? You know, you don't really have to compete with your mom. You could come over to Terrytown. Tell me more. Well, it's a place that's cool. Oh, <laughs> so they need a general store. That's perfect. But in the Akala region, that's pretty far out. But I guess I gotta leave the nest someday, and I have to make my own store. Alright, so I guess he convinced himself again, so okay, I made up my mind, I'm going! I know, I'll gather some items, and on my way to Terrytown, I'll sell them at my new shop. Thanks for the tip, and hey, don't be a stranger, come visit my new home sometime. So he already knows he is welcome to the town, and now goodbye. Again. Yeah, that music. <laughs> it doesn't get old, honestly. I love it, but... Alright, so... Before we make our way back, we know Fison has left, and now he's heading to Terry 10 and all of that, but... We need trees. We will not necessarily trees, but the wood from the trees. And where can we get those? Well, I mean, they're all around us, so let's... Yeah, that's pretty obvious, but... <laughs> not only are they all around us, there's actually a pretty convenient area to get them, and... It's actually over here, by the stable. Now, to teleport to the stable, you kind of need to teleport to either the shrine or, I guess, the Divine Beast Meadow and head to it. Because this is one of the, uh, you know, stables that doesn't have a shrine right by it. It's funny, I mentioned it literally early in the video. And here we are, at a stable, without a shrine right by it. I mean, don't get me wrong, there will be shrines around it, but there'll be no one as close as, like, the other shrines are to other stables. But... I was a reader with a mission, uh, you know what, let's not get sidetracked. I want to focus on certain side quests without really getting too sidetracked with other side quests. So, yeah, don't worry, we'll, we'll get to all of them when the time comes. But here we are in the Rito stable, yes. Uh, and there is a woodcutter's axe perfectly there for us. But I want to show off how to farm wood without a woodcutter's axe, without anything. It's just, yeah, like this. Throw some um, of your... You know, remote bombs, and blow it up, and just like that, we're going to be getting ourselves so much wood without even affecting anything. And if actually, if you're accurate enough, you can, like, hit it in the center and, like, blow up two trees at once. That way it goes by a little bit faster, as you can see here. I can blow up more planks. I didn't really do it that properly. Let me try here. All right, and, uh. Okay, for some reason, the radius isn't really that good. And this is the upgrade bomb, keep in mind. Um... So that means it has shorter cooldown, and uh, apparently does more damage, but you can't really tell in terms of farming wood. But there we go, alright, that's what I'm talking about. So it makes it really easy to farm in the Rito stable. Uh, the main reason why I picked it specifically is because this. They have so much chopped down wood that, yeah, this is like, what, seven trees or so? That we were able to get within one second. And we'd even have to chop down the tree itself. It was already chopped. We just had to break the wood collectively. So, yeah, this is going to be a really easy way to farm as much wood. And it looks like acorns as well as possible if they drop down. And this is pretty much how I do it. If I don't want to use any of my weapons, and I highly suggest you guys do it as well if this is, uh, you know, a necessity. I mean, it is. To do this side quest, you need wood but aside from that you know it's not too hard to farm wood but yeah i guess i'll farm uh all of this on screen so you guys can see how fast i'll do it in terms of using the bombs you can also if you know you want and you feel like it will be quicker you can try this where you go through both bombs that way they're like always on cooldown and i guess that will be faster because yeah think about this we're just constantly using the bombs now so if anything i'm glad i'm doing this Let's, uh, let's keep it up, because this is actually going to make it way quicker for us. I just have to make sure I detonate it before I swap to other ones. But, all right, let's go ahead and now toss this, detonate, swap, toss, wait, throw. I, I, we'll just literally break what we do. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oh, uh, well, this is great. Hey, buddy. Uh, oh, no. Not really trying to fight you right now, so why don't you just come here? Take, I mean, he should be dead after this. Wait, can I just walk away and not look back? I mean, it took too long to swing him, but yeah, I didn't really have to hit him that many times because this damage, the sword does like, what, 40 damage? And, 
they have like not that much HP. Whoa, buddy! Wanna chill out? Why did that Octorok run like that? And we got an Octorok eyeball. Did I really never kill an Octorok before? I, I might have. Maybe they just never dropped the eyeball. I believe they only dropped balloons on me. All right, let's uh, let's continue doing this. Keep doing the switcheroo because uh, it is working pretty well. Actually, it's making it much faster, as you can see, because we can get a whole tree just like that. So, yeah, too bad they don't really drop that much wood. Like when you think about it, you get what one set of planks out of them, like one bundle. It'd be nice if these taller ones gave us several, but it's whatever. I mean, this is still a really easy way to farm. Eh, okay. Is this really happening? How did I not manage to explode that? There we go. And we hit that one. Nice. Two trees with one bomb. <laughs> yeah, okay. These enemies are so annoying. Okay, you know what? Respawn for me. Okay, bye. There we go. <laughs> Jeez, it was uh, yeah, a little disturbing, but we managed to kill him so easily and in a very cool fashion. I mean, I love using our bosses fury for that. So awesome, but all right, we're just gonna continue doing this and there is some more over there. I could farm that, whoa, I did not mean to hit myself with my own bomb. <laughs> I don't know if I wanna farm them all like this. Like, I feel like this might get a little annoying. Like I'm constantly throwing bows. I feel like this is a little, uh, yeah, a little much, but it, it's saving my weapons, so yeah, why not just embrace it? Let's uh, see how much we're- alright, so we're almost there, literally 10 more. You know what, let's just start using the old sword and uh, make this go a little bit faster. Actually, if anything, look at it, it takes a lot longer to do it otherwise, if anything. So, this method is not only quicker, but it's also just more efficient in terms of, like, time- uh, saving because yeah, as you can see bam yeah pretty quick like literally with if you upgrade your uh, remote bomb the cooldown for it is just so much faster that yeah it's really nice and don't worry for those wondering what happens to all the trees you uh, you know cut down they will what really it didn't even hit it what happens to all the trees you cut down yeah they will actually respawn the second you reload the area so Teleport literally back to the Rito Shrine, and that will do it for you immediately. You don't really have to do anything else. It's actually much easier than like having to wait for enemies, because usually for enemies you have to wait until the Blood Moon, of course, and not just for the area to reload. But for trees, yeah, don't worry. You don't have to wait until the Blood Moon. If so, that would be a little much, but luckily the game doesn't have that. All right, so we are done. 51, you know, let's make it 52 or whatever the amount will be if this will drop more than one. No, okay, it's 52. Uh, but yeah, okay, we're good. So I collected literally 50 within, I want to say, a pretty short amount of time. And I didn't use any of my, we well, I barely used any of my weapons to do so. So I feel like, yeah, it's definitely the easiest way to farm. I mean, there's a lot of trees over in the Rito Stable. And then on top of it, you have all the cut down trees that you could easily use. Um, I don't know if there's a, like, a much easier place. For me, this is what's worked. I feel like in terms of farming wood, this is where I went to. So I feel like, yeah, this might be the best area, um, in my opinion. But obviously, if there is a better area, I, I wouldn't know about it. Uh, so if there is, you know, you can always let me know in the comments. I just feel like that, regardless, it was pretty simple with what we just did. So, yeah. But, all right, as you can see, yes, we are so close. Every time we jump... Like, we do this leap back to Terrytown, we see another boulder destroyed, more progression done. Uh, it's really nice. And yes, Fison has now opened up a shop, and he resides in Terrytown, but it's not done yet. There's still a little more to go. I mean, this is pretty much all he wanted in terms of, like, selling stuff and just having stuff, because now we have a merchant here, which is awesome. A traveling merchant, uh, nonetheless, Ooh. but... Alright, so hey... You managed to find a reader and bring him back here. Thank you. He wastes no time getting a general store up and running. Apparently, his family runs one, too. And the name, like, Fison, he fits right in. He sells things that he's picked up while flying around. You should really go check out his store. All right, I will. His store is actually really helpful. But what's next? So before we can call more people here, uh, can you bring me 30 bundles of wood? All right, that's the first thing we need. Or 50. 
That's the first thing we need to do. Luckily, I already did that when getting Fison, so we're good. Excellent. Can I have them? Sure. All right. Again, we're the lifesaver. Take him away. So, I actually wanted to talk about something a little personal. What's wrong? Oh, not that kind of personal. Actually, I got engaged. Wait, what? Oh, no way. That's crazy. Uh, so, it's true, too, then. Toronson. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, she was looking for someone, and, you know, she even mentioned how tailoring might help her find the Vaux she needs, and I guess it was destiny, because that's what, Ron, you know, Ron, uh, Hudson and Ronson were looking for, so, I guess they're a cute couple, thank you. <laughs> anyway, we want to have a little ceremony to celebrate, but we need someone priest-like to officiate. Uh, could you look for someone priest-like for us? Priest-like, huh? If we're looking for people devout enough to have a priest-like person, I'd suggest Zora. Good luck, you'll need it again. Yeah, we gotta go find out one last wrinkle. Y yeah, the, the, the sun issue here. We get it, man. You don't, you don't really have to tell us that every time. I like how, I like how he literally says it in the exact same way every single time. But alright, so, again, as much as I want to use this goddess statue to get myself another hunt container, it's gotta wait until this town is complete. But before I do anything, let's go ahead and check out Fison's workshop. Not much of a workshop, because he, yeah, he needs the wood to build the house. So I believe if we do come back, he will have this house for Fison built. But I just want to show off his little workshop here. Keep in mind, he doesn't like it when you stand on the table, as you can see. I don't care if you're paying customer. <laughs> I can't let you climb up there. Yeah, okay, sorry, man. And now we can easily buy all of the cool arrows he's selling. I feel like he sells it the cheapest out of anyone. And, I mean, he has them all on display instead of having Ted to each town to find a certain element of arrows. So, yeah, Fison is the man to rely on arrows for. He's, yeah, the guy. I mean, overall, Terrytown is the best in terms of purchasing stuff. But... Okay, so one last thing we need to do, and also, yeah, with the music all has the Rito theme in it. Wait, I need to have you guys listen to that part, too. Because I want to show off how, like, well put together this whole quest is. Like, in terms of even the music, Nintendo, like, put detail to that. Like this, pretty much. I'm not sure if it's playing it yet. But, I mean, overall, it sounds really nice. Uh, yeah, pretty much all it is is, like, the music gets, uh, it, it just really builds together and you really feel like, you know, this is an area of all of the other towns at, you know, together in one area. I don't know. I just really like the idea, as mentioned many times. So, I can't help but point it out. I just think it's really interesting. Regardless, let us now leave and head over to Zora's Domain, because like Hudson said, that is the final area we need to head to, and, um, well, not necessarily head to, but we need to find a Zora, a priest-like person, and apparently, according to him, Zoras are the best for that, so we're going to be looking for that. Sadly, it's not as easy, you know, we got to find someone with sun uh, at the end of their name, but so far it hasn't been hard, nor has it been hard to convince them. They've been kind of looking for something on their own, Seems like all of these people with sun in their name are just generally lost, and we're looking for Terrytown, so... Link directing them there, essentially. You know, that just worked out, but alright. Hey, it's a boy, Sidon. The man, the myth, the legend. He is so tall, what the frick? <laughs> like, whoa. It's, uh, it's freaking hilarious. Isn't just Link is short, like, compared to the Gerudo, the Zora, the Goron, Link is just overall, he just seems pretty small compared to all of these races. But then again, these races, though they are humanoid, it doesn't mean they literally have to be as big as humans. It makes sense for Linkish to generally be shorter, like for the Zoras to just overall be bigger than uh, humans, or Hylians to be exact, which pretty sure Hylians are humans, just with pointed ears. Uh, I mean, uh, duh. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go ahead and I'll speak to, yeah, so Capson, this is the last one we need to speak to. So, well, well, it's always nice to see a visitor here. Thank you for joining to our fair Zora's Domain. Wait a moment, you, you're Link, the perpetrator who forced Lady Mifa to join his crusade a hundred years ago, only to be destroyed by Calamity Ganon, as though I could never forget that face. You should know that the elderly here who love Lady Mifa still remember, and they still resent you. I, however, 
resent the deed and not the person. I also believe in allowing the mistakes of the past to wash away. Link, I have retired from my role as priest and now living uh, my life free from the material concerns of this world. However, ever since I retired, each day is more boring than the last. Spending day after day in idleness only to pass from this world. Link, as I'm sure you are well aware, the afterlife lays claim to all. Well, never know when it beckons. If during your travels you meet any engaged couples, I would like for you to introduce them to me. Joining two souls is a true honor one shall stake my life on. Just one more wedding, and I shall be fulfilled. Well, yeah, not only is he looking for a couple, he's looking for just m more to do, and well, get a load of this, yes. I have been waiting to hear those words, now tell me the specifics. Yeah, uh, as you can see, in Terrytown, stuff is going to happen at the location of Terrytown. In Akala, Akala isn't too far from here. It would please me to hurry there right away by yourself. No need to worry about me. I have always had confidence in my fins and feet. It's been a long while since I've had work. I am eager to put my skills to use. And you should come as well. I will start my preparations in Terrytown in the meantime. Alright, so, bye. Yes, again, we say goodbye as uh, he makes his way to Terrytown. So, let's go ahead and let, uh, I, I want to call him Terry for a second. Let's let Hudson know. It's funny how they didn't have a son in the town name when it's, like, all based off of that. Like, you would have thought that the, the town would also carry the name, but it's, it doesn't carry it at all. Uh, yeah. But regardless, you know, we brought another character, you know, someone with, son at the end of their name and someone who fits the role of what they're looking for the priest like i mean he was actually a priest so i, I don't know how you fit a role more than that you know <laughs> we literally found the perfect person for them so let us see what hudson thinks about that and uh, i mean a freaking ceremony is going to be happening soon he, i mean hudson is getting married as you can see in our travels of finding new people to join this town uh hudson and, uh, you know, Ronson have managed to, yeah, end up getting engaged. And it's funny because not really, I mean, it's all been one episode and a whole relationship has stemmed. But I guess that's what happened. I mean, I've, obviously more time has passed technically within the game. But all right. So I brought you the dude I was looking for. Hey, so you found Azura. Thank you. Really? Uh, he and I talked earlier and he said that he literally was a priest before he retired. He can't get more- that's literally what I said. He can't get more priests like that, yeah. So his name is, uh, you know, Cavson too. I have no objections there. It is really amazing that you were able to find someone priest like who also has an acceptable name. Well, next is, uh, what's that? Of course, we'll have to invite guests in order to hold the ceremony. Guests? Uh, who? Well, I'm talking about my boss, but yeah, Bolson and uh, his support in it. Carson, all right, I see. So, however, I got to prepare for the ceremony, so my hands are full. Could you invite them for me? Okay, where are they? You know where they are. The boss and Carson are in a hate to know village, right? Ah, I see. And yeah, excellent. I'm counting on you. Now, obviously, they are in hate to know. We literally did the Hylian ownership side quest last time. And for those who haven't completed it, because you can do this side quest without fully furnishing your house. Don't worry, um, we are pretty much just inviting him for the ceremony, and, um, yeah, you should be able to get, uh, both, you know, Bolson and, um, uh, Carson back to Hey to Know to finish furnishing your town after the ceremony, but that's the thing, we gotta first make our way to the ceremony and get all of that done with, uh, so let's go ahead and invite both, uh, yeah, you know, Bolson and Carson and let them know and, uh, yeah, then the ceremony should start because we already have the Zora and everything else is, you know, come to play. And it's really cool because the town is, at this point, completely built. But I'll take a better look at it once we're done with the ceremony and everything. Overall, it's just, yeah, such a cool quest that we're ending it off with, like, literally a ceremony. Like, not only do you, you know, finish up the town, but, you know, you gotta, yeah, get the ceremony established as well with the uh, Hudson. You know, he's celebrating two things, a finished town and, I, I, you know, the wedding, <laughs> his wedding, too. Can't forget about that, but I don't know why I keep doing that. Every time I start from 
Heitano over in the Sheikah uh, Shrine. I just instantly glide. But no, from the Sheikah Shrine, you can easily make your way to your house just like this. As you can see, our house should be here. But I don't believe Bolson nor Carson will be waiting. They might. No, okay, they're not. And uh, yeah, that's because they're not really hanging out at nighttime. Um, they go to sleep and they all I believe they only go to sleep when like you finish completely building your house but They'll always come back and hang out with you during the day. So as you can see. Yeah, there they are So let's go ahead and speak to Volson and hey, so wait what? Hudson getting married and you want me to attend the wedding? Wow, good on him. Okie do. Uh, I'm in wedding time, baby. Not like there's anything else to do here anyway. Well, I guess I'll get packed and head towards Hudson Place. All right. So this will be fun. Okie do. Looks like rain. Yeah, I like how he actually points it out. Yeah, there's always Aww. rain in this game. So Carson, we're headed out. All right. And yeah, so finally I've been waiting for this day. They are now leaving. All right, he literally waved twice. All right, Carson, and... Yeah, that's probably gonna be the last time we're gonna hear that. Um, you know, with getting people over to the town. But all right, so now let us make our way to Terrytown and finally put an end to this side quest. Yeah, overall, this side quest takes some time to do but I mean <laughs> it was worth it for sure like let us take a better look at Terrytown hopefully Akala doesn't have it raining I mean I want it to be nice and sunny for when this ceremony happens it would be a little lame for it to rain during that time but uh yeah we will see right now as we make our way back to Akala and straight to Terrytown and I love gliding and seeing how it looks especially when it is completely built because as you can see now Yes, it is a beautiful town and obviously it is raining But I believe once we make it maybe there because it will be really far away from hopefully this rain cloud come on Or not. Okay. I'll, I'll just literally wait out time I guess because I want to like appreciate the town with how it looks and everything but Yeah, this is it all of the house, I mean, the houses look pretty identical and everything, but just seeing it and seeing, like, the lights and... <gasps> yes, it is sunny! Sweet! I, I think it has to be sunny for what's gonna happen up next. Maybe the game wants it to be sunny, because it would really ruin the whole setting of the, the ceremony. I mean, yeah, you would only think. But, okay, the music is now fully together, and, uh, it sounds great. But, l let's, just fi let's just finish this side quest. So, alright. Uh, we got everybody, so hey, you extended my invitation for me, thank you. Now then, Carson and the boss, Bolson, are waiting for things to begin. Shall we start the ceremony? Of course! Let's do this, understood. Then, let's join the gathering. Silence, please, everyone. We shall now begin. We are gathered here today to join Hudson and Ronson in matrimony. Hudson, before the eyes of these witnesses and before those of Goddess Hylia, do you take Ronson to be your wife, to have and hold in good times and in bad? Oy. I do. Excellent. And Ronson, before the eyes of the witnesses and before those of Goddess Hylia, do you take Hudson as your lawfully wedded husband in sickness and health? And do you also vow to name your children in accordance with the Bolson construction naming guidelines? Wait a moment. Those vows are not traditional by anyone's standards. What makes you say that? <laughs> They're as traditional as it gets. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Like, I, I can't even take this seriously, like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, Bolson's idea here is it has to go by that, and... <laughs> Alright, anyways, uh, yeah, so, I don't think she means traditional in that sense of the <laughs> word. A vow of undying tradition. A vow of guidelines compliance. <laughs> I'll take that vow. <laughs> think of the future generations. Well, those are the guidelines. I do. Excellent. Oh. 
And so, dearly beloved, please help me in greeting this newly married couple. I wish this new couple nothing but the utmost happiness as they set out on this journey of marital bliss. And so, that is that. It, w it was, yeah, it was pretty funny, but also pretty nice, you know, seeing all the races of Zelda together in this uh, marriage. And I don't know, I, yeah, I just really like the side quest, because now we can pretty much visit all of the cool and unique races of Zelda all in one area. And overall, this just feels like in a town that, you know, we put together. I mean, we were the ones that seeked out all of these people and told them about the town and had him come here and now let's see what Hudson has to say and let's wrap up this side quest once and for all so hey it's you thank you for attending the ceremony are, are you crying what no it's just something in my eye and now Terry town looks like a real town at long last this was all possible because of you I can't thank you for all the hard work you did all right this is for you. So we did get something out of all of this. We got three diamonds. Nice. So these were found inside the boulders we smashed when clearing the land. Ronson and I have no use for them. You could take them. Thanks, man. And well, from the ground up, it's, it's all up. It's all here. Pretty nice, right? <laughs> yeah, we finally did it. And now that we've done it, let us use the goddess statue. It looks so much better than before because it has a really nice stage for it and the little water. I mean, it, it literally like a uh, freaking fountain. It looks awesome, yeah. But I, I need my heart container now because, you know, I've been waiting all episode for this. So feels good to have finally got it. Heck yeah. And there's one more thing I got to do before... We finally end off the episode and um, kind of end off the side quest as a whole. So, now I mentioned many times, and a lot of you guys have been asking, does the Hylian shield break? It does, and I don't know how else to prove it because it, it, it didn't break on me, but it will break eventually, and I will have it break in this playthrough. My point is it does. I get a lot of people who tell me it doesn't, but no, guys, it does. I've had it break a lot on me in my personal playthrough, but... How do I re-get it? Because you it's yeah, we have blood moons, things respawn, but the Hylian shield won't. This is a one of a kind shield. This is special. Well, this guy. Yo. So yes. Hey! Oh, what? Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Granty, a dashing novice researcher of ancient civilizations. I've still got a lot to learn though. That's why my father told me to go out and see the world. Are you also making your way through the world? Uh, something like that. Oh, you too, huh? I'm beside myself with glee. Anyway, you must have come from a very long way to get here. Hey, how about as a reward, I let you buy my ultra-rare armor as a decent price. So I feel like this is like the game developers talking, thanking you for you playing this far into the game, and now we can actually get something out of it. So if you lose armor, uh, especially valuable, so just, let me just say show me the good so I can show you guys what rare stuff he has. Climbing stuff, stuff called the Barbarian Armor, rare gear like the rubber set, and even the old and well-worn stuff that we got in the beginning of the game. So let's say I didn't get the rubber armor, I did, and then I lost it like I dropped it. And by dropping it, I mean, like, selling it, because that's the only way you can truly, let go of armor. It's not like items within this game. But let's say I were to sell it on accident, and now I can't get it again, because this is a unique item. Well, yeah, this is where this guy comes in, because now we can purchase all of it, including the climbing gear, the rubber gear, the barbarian set, all of that. And you don't actually have to collect all of them to buy it. Once you do this quest, he will sell it to you, but it's really expensive, of course. Now you may say, okay, where's the Hylian Shield? Also, yeah, you can buy the sand and snow boots, but I do believe you'll have to do the quest for him to get these boots. So don't think you can do this quest and then easily buy them without doing the, um, the eight heroines or the eighth heroine quest thing that we did over in Gerudo Town. And yeah, but that's how you get both the sand and snow boots. But yeah, you may say, okay, where's the Hylian Shield? Well, it has to break 
You can't have more than one Hylian shield, but trust me, he will have it in his inventory if you lose it, if something happens and you can't get your hands on it. You may say, oh, but what if I go ahead and uh, hang it on my wall? The game won't know, right? No, the game won't know. You, you technically haven't lost it. It's still obtainable. It's technically, like, still with you when you have it um, hanged on the wall. Because I could have done that with all of the champion weapons. Could have hung them on my wall and then went and got fake ones. But the game will also tell you that. Like, if I go to um, uh, Valeria, which I have yet to do, which we'll do in the next episode. But when I do go to Valeria and let her know about the Gerudo Scimitar and how I lost uh, the, you know, the Scimitar of the Seven, which was Urbosa's, she will then be willing to rebuild it but if I were to hang it on the wall and come back and then tell her she may notice it's not on me but she won't be willing to do it like the game doesn't want to give you multiple unique items like the Hylian shield like the champion weapons um, I mean you can get fake versions of like Mephus trident but that's the extent of having more than one of the same like unique weapon but yeah, I'm, I just thought I'd explain this, because I know a lot of you guys have been asking about both the Highland Shield and the champion weapons and how they work within this game. You, you can get all the unique items again, whether being from this dude here or rebuilding it. It's just, you have to actually lose it entirely. The game doesn't want to give you the option to have to. But anyways, that does it for this video. Since this video is probably already going to be really long and I can't do anything else about it, might as well check the amiibo. I always feel bad dragging these videos out for so long. It's just a side quest in this game take a while and I don't want to sit and split them up because I know how annoying they'd be watching. But I also know how very long videos might not be the best in terms of like watching as well. Um, it's just, I feel like, you know, we, we gotta get stuff done each episode. And, you know, this episode was this side quest, so it, it didn't matter how long it takes, we did it, right? That's how I see it. But I'm hoping with these amiibo that some way, somehow, and my controller's messed up, it keeps moving to the side. Like, Link just automatically starts moving, or starts moving at random. But that's not my point. I'm trying to see if I can hopefully get myself one of the... Cool secret items. Uh, I don't see any luck. All right, let me just. Yeah, I can use this claymore. This is really strong. This was from the Ganondorf amiibo. But okay, let us use the 8-bit Link amiibo. I'm just literally gonna. Uh, I'll tell you guys what amiibo I'm using once uh, I get something good out of it. So far, it's been nothing so far. Oh uh, yeah, this is not good. <laughs> well, I guess that does it, cause I've already used the Ocarina of Time, the Twilight Princess, and the Eight Bit, Eight Bit, uh, and none of them has given me what I was hoping for, which is the um, the Green Link stuff. You know, I'm hoping that I will eventually get this, the rest of these sets, but it will take some time, as you can see. This one looks pretty cool, but. Uh, you know, we're still working on the other ones with the amiibo. If push comes to shove, I'll, uh, I'll do it the way that is intended and constantly soft reset. But I'm trying to get it by luck the way I'm assuming Nintendo wanted you to get it. I just find it dumb how these amiibo even give you stuff like the Royal Claymore. It's like, you know, it, it's already not, it's like the Royal Claymore is in the game, you can get hundreds of those. Why have the amiibo give you something you can get within the game? Understand the... The loot should be rare, but I feel like it's way too rare, especially in terms of a let's play. I just want to get it officially, like I want to do it the way it's meant to be, but at the same time I kind of want to not do it, because I feel like even if I do it at the end of every other episode, we're still not getting anything. We managed to get all the Wind Waker ones, but we're not having luck with the other ones, so we'll see whether or not I'll do the other route in terms of soft resetting. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you guys think of the side quest overall and the whole dynamic of getting all the races of the, you know, Zelda races together, making a town and making like this end game area where you can buy cool, you know, unique items. You can get all the arrows within the game. Like, I feel like, yeah, Nintendo did a really nice thing in terms of making a town like this. Really feels like just the end game of, um, of places to be in. Building it from the ground up maybe just makes it really cool. Like, I don't know. I just really like this side quest. Anywho, I'm going to stop rambling and saying the same thing with how much I like this. And, yeah, I'll end off the episode. Thanks again for watching. I've been Zelda Master, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.